What's up, cool people? I'm Matt Conroy. Welcome back to some more Bible reading. Genesis 46. Um, so last time, basically, the cat kind of came out of the bag, figuratively speaking. Joseph finally came clean on <laughs> who he was to his brothers. And then the whole rest of his family essentially got invited to live down in Egypt. Um, so then Jacob's brothers went back to Canaan, told their father, Jacob, you know, that Joseph was still alive and that they were being invited to live down in Egypt. And that's kind of where we left things off. Alrighty. So Genesis 46 so Jacob set out of Egypt with all his possessions. And when he came to Beersheba, he offered sacrifices to the God of his father, Isaac. During the night, God spoke to him in a vision. Jacob, Jacob, he called. Here I am, Jacob replied. I am the God of your father. Or sorry, I am God, the God of your father, the voice said. Do not be afraid to go down to Egypt, for there I will make your family into a great nation. I will go with you down to Egypt, and I will bring you back again. You will die in Egypt, but Joseph will be with you to close your eyes. So, I guess, you know, with Jacob being fairly old at this point, uh, there was some concern in his mind that he would be dying soon, which was part of the reason he wanted to go to Egypt in the first place. Um, so I guess this is God just reassuring him, yes, go to Egypt, you'll, you'll make it there, you'll get to see Joseph before you die, um, you'll die while you're down in Egypt, but, you know, you'll still get to see Joseph, and, you know, say your goodbyes to him, essentially. Uh, footnotes, probably the one next to Jacob's name is just, yeah, also Israel. Uh, the second footnote says the Hebrew translates to I am El, uh, so rather than I am God. So El in the Hebrew language means God. That's why it is saying that, and that's why all the other translations of Hebrew that involve like El whatever, like El Shaddai or El Roy or whatever are all like the God who whatever or the God of whatever. And so, yeah. Um, and then I guess there was the note on Beersheba because of that being an important place especially to Isaac in prior events. But anyway, this chapter is looking a bit longer than the last one, so let's move along here. Verse 5. So Jacob left Beersheba, and his sons took him to Egypt. They carried him and their little ones and their wives in the wagons Pharaoh had provided for them. They also took all their livestock and all their personal belongings, sorry, and all the personal belongings they had acquired in the land of Canaan. So Jacob and his entire family went to Egypt, sons and grandsons, daughters and granddaughters, all his descendants. Okay, so, like, they, they, they got the whole gang and all everything that they had. I don't know how big these wagons were, but I mean, my understanding is that, you know, they had quite a bit of stuff. So I, I, I gotta imagine they were pretty sizable. Also, I realize this is not necessarily, you know, common to the area the, the the era that we're talking about, but my brain wants to think of like you know the old covered wagons like you might see in like you know western movies or that kind of thing. 
really, if anything, these wagons were probably uncovered. Almost more like if you, like, well, I don't know. I I guess my brain just went to something sort of like within the, you know, the Prince of Egypt movie. But those were, the ones I'm thinking of while they were in the race were more so just like personal wagon things. But I, I, I can imagine something similar to that, but, you know, a bigger section in the back. And it may or may not have been covered. I don't know. <laughs> anyway. Okay, moving along. I guess since we're talking about Jacob's descendants, we're going to get into a bit of a genealogy thing here. So, verse 8. These are the names of the descendants of Israel, the sons of Jacob, who went to Egypt. Reuben was Jacob's oldest son. The sons of Reuben were Hanok, Palu, Hezron, and Carmi. The sons of Simeon were Jemuel, Jamin, Ohad, Jachin, Zohar, and Shaul. Shaul's mother was a Canaanite woman. I guess it specified that just because the uh, others were not. The, you know, given the slight displeasure that, um, you know, Isaac had with Esau having a Canaanite wife. Maybe that's kind of why there was the mention there. So it's like, you know, it's only, you know, that child is only like half Hebrew, half Israelite, whatever you want to call it. But anyway, um, only halfway descended from Abraham, for lack of a better way to put it. Anyway, okay, so the sons of Levi, yeah. the sons of Levi were Gershon, Kohath, and Merari. Sons of Judah were Ur, Onan, Shila, Perez, and Zerah. Though Ur and Onan had died in the land of Canaan, the sons of Perez were Hezron and Hamul. Also, the the this stuff about you know, Ur and Onan, we read about back in, like, chapter 38 or something like that. Maybe that was <laughs> to give us some background information on this, so we would know that they had died and why and how. I don't know. Anyway, uh, verse 13. The sons of Issachar were Tola, Pua, Jashub, and Shimron. Sons of Zebulun were Sirid, Elon, and Jaleel. These were the sons of Leah and Jacob, who were born in Paddan Aram, in addition to their daughter Dinah. The number of Jacob's descendants, male and female, through Leah was 33. I don't recall it numbering the descendants in previous genealogies. Just... Interesting note that that might be the first time that that is used in the Bible. First time that's brought up. Anyway, um, so those, all of that from verse 8 through here, that was all just Leah's sons and corresponding grandchildren. Anyway, uh, the sons of Gad were Zephon, Haggai, Shunai, Esbon, Arai, Arodai, and Orelai. I don't know if they actually all have the long I pronunciations like that. I just was on a roll with it, so I kept going with that. Also, just remembered, I have not been addressing uh, footnotes. So, footnote next to Pua says, as in Syriac version, 
and Samaritan Pentateuch, Hebrew reads Puva. Okay. Um, Jashub, as in, as in some Greek manuscripts and Samaritan Pentateuch, uh, Hebrew reads Lob, or, or would that be Iob? I would, I would assume, given that it's the start of a name, that would be a capital I. So, Iob? Hmm. Anyway, and then there was uh, another footnote next to Zephon, as in Greek version and Samaritan Pentateuch. Uh, Hebrew reads Ziphion. So most of these footnotes seem to be related to names and which manuscripts they came from, essentially. Anyway, moving on. Uh, so the sons of Asher were Imna, Ishva, Ishvi, and Bariah. Their sister was Sarah. Bariah's sons were Heber and Malkiel. So, not only are we getting into grandchildren of Isaac, but now also great-grandchildren. Anyway, uh, verse 18, these were the sons of Zilpah, the servant given to Leah by her father Laban. The number of Jacob's descendants through Zilpah was 16. So, basic, so Gad and Asher were Zilpah's children, and then, of course, the associated grandchildren and great-grandchildren were mentioned there. Um, where did it mention... Because... Because there was... Okay, so there was Leah, Rachel, Zilpa, and there was another one, I guess. Okay, <laughs> for a second I wasn't seeing that one, and I was like, okay, what... Uh, anyway, uh, so the sons of Jacob's wife, Rachel, were Joseph and Benjamin. Joseph's sons, born in the land of Egypt, were Manasseh and Ephraim. Their mother was Aseneth, daughter of Potiphar, a priest of On. Which, Greek version reads of Heliopolis. That sounds like a familiar footnote. Uh, Benjamin's sons were Bila, Beaker, Ashbel, Gera, Naaman, Ehi, Rosh, Mupim, Hopim, and Ard. Benjamin had a lot more sons, apparently. Uh, these were the sons of Rachel and Jacob. The number of Jacob's descendants through Rachel was 14. Uh, son of Dan was Hushim. Sons of Naphtali were Jazil, Gunai, Jezer, and Shilam. These were, these were the sons of Bilhah, the servant given to Rachel by her father Laban. The number of Jacob's descendants through Bilhah was seven. That also seems to have decided the order of appearance of the children. Because, I mean, while it started with Reuben the oldest, it didn't end with Benjamin, who was the youngest. So I think it ordered them based on quantity of descendants from each wife, essentially, through each mother of Jacob's sons. Anyway, uh... The total number of Jacob's direct descendants who went with him to Egypt, not counting his son's wives, was 66. In addition, Joseph had two sons who were born in Egypt. So altogether, there were 70 members of Jacob's family in the land of Egypt. Okay, so he had 66. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Number of Jacob's descendants who went with him was 66. So maybe that wasn't then counting Joseph, 
his wife and the uh, I don't know. Anyway. Okay, moving on. Verse 28. As they neared their destination, Jacob sent Judah ahead to meet Joseph and get directions to the region of Goshen. And when they finally arrived there, Joseph prepared his chariot and traveled to Goshen to meet his father Jacob. When Joseph arrived, he embraced his father and wept, holding him for a long time. Finally, Jacob said to Joseph, Now I am ready to die, since I have seen your face again and know you are still alive. So, at this point, I, I, I guess it's implied that, you know, Jacob was satisfied with his life and also, in, in this particular moment, satisfied that he got to see and finally completely know, without a doubt, that Joseph was indeed alive. Because, I mean, he had been so distraught before when he thought Joseph had died. Um, oh, forgot about these earlier footnotes. Uh, so, footnote related to Joseph having two sons born in Egypt. Uh, Greek version reads nine sons, probably including Joseph's grandsons through Ephraim and Manasseh. Okay. Uh, so then altogether there were 70 members, Greek version reads 75, because of the previous note reading nine sons, I guess. So that, even though it added two more sons, or sorry, even though it added seven Sons, related to, you know, the description of Joseph in the Greek, the the number that read 75, that must have, the, 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 the I'm like, nine minus two is seven, so how do we get from 70 to 75, but I wonder if that then kind of already had the, the, the prior sons of Joseph that were mentioned wrapped up in this 66 number here. I don't know. Anyway. Okay. Verse 31. And Joseph said to his brothers and to his father's entire family, I will go to Pharaoh and tell him, my brothers and my father's entire family have come to me from the land of Canaan. These men are shepherds, and they raise livestock. They have brought with them their flocks and herds and everything they own. Then he said, When Pharaoh calls for you and asks you about your occupation, you must tell him, We, your servants, have raised livestock all our lives, as our ancestors have always done. When you tell him this, he will let you live here in the region of Goshen, for the Egyptians despise shepherds. Okay. Not sure what's up with the whole Egyptians despising shepherds idea, but, uh, okay. <laughs> but also, I mean, it's not like that was a lie that was fairly accurate. They did a lot of tending of sheep, <laughs> as we've read in the previous chapters. Um, but I guess Goshen was... Kind of a more uh, a land that would have been better suited for that kind of thing, probably like with, with you know open fields and all that kind of stuff. And because Pharaoh mentioned wanting to give them the best land they had, um, m maybe maybe in other cases. Goshen might not have been d deemed the best land, but perhaps Joseph is thinking, well, because of them having all this livestock and being shepherds, Goshen is probably the best land on the whole that we could 
that, that, that his family could live in, essentially. Um, so, yeah, I guess that kind of wraps up that chapter and any... I don't really have any additional thoughts related to it. So, yeah. That's gonna do it for this one, I guess. As always, like the video if you enjoyed it. Share it with others if you want them to see. Uh, make sure you subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell to get updates when I post new videos. Uh, look down in the description for info on my other social media pages and how to find and follow those. And of course, leave thoughts down in the comments section with any ideas that you have or thoughts related to this video. Whatever you have for me, let me know down below. So that's going to do it. Hope you're all doing well. Hopefully I will see you for the next one. But until then, stay cool, people.